Okay guys, welcome back to another episode of What's in the Night Sky. At the end of the video, I'll be sharing details on the 2020 Witten's calendar, which features dates of significant astro events pre-written into the calendar, and of course, 12 images of various night sky wonders. But this month, we have opportunities for plenty of Milky Way action, even though Milky Way core season has finished. There's a few active meteor showers, the zodiacal light is still at its best. Andromeda is well placed and the small and large Magellanic clouds are also well placed for some tracking action. But before we deep dive into all that and more, a quick message from the sponsors of today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 29,000 classes in design, business, and all things photography and videography. If you're looking to brush up on your landscape astrophotography, then you should check out this course by Ian Norman, the guy behind LonelySpec.com. He covers all the basics you need to know to capture and edit amazing nightscape images that include things like the Milky Way. There's also another course run by adventure photographer and Instagram legend Chris Burkhard. He teaches you outdoor photography from sunset to sunrise and even capturing wonderful images in the nighttime that exists between. Skillshare is super affordable, an annual subscription costs just seven pounds a month and that gives you access to all of the courses and you can try as many as you like. But if you use the link in the video description below, you can get two months free of Skillshare Premium. So you can try out as many classes as you like. So follow that link in the description below and you can get two months free of Skillshare Premium. Okay guys, welcome to October. And for those of you that are new here, the information in this video is mainly for wide angle astrophotography shooters. But this month there's some good opportunities for some telephoto astrophotography as well. Now, astrophotography forums and Facebook groups are full of people whining about the end of Milky Way season. As I've mentioned in the past, I prefer to use the term Milky Way core season as there's still plenty of Milky Way to be photographed all year round. In the Northern Hemisphere, it's a great time to photograph the great rift in the Western sky as darkness falls. The dark river of dust and gas is a region rich in star formation and is seen as a dark lane dissecting the length of the Milky Way. And it offers you a chance for new compositional possibilities that you can't achieve with the Milky Way core because you can find it in the west northwest. As the night goes on, the Great Rift sets and the Cygnus region, one of my favorite parts of the Milky Way, is left standing upright on the northwestern horizon. You'll also be able to capture the Andromeda galaxy in the same frame too. And as Andromeda reaches a high position in the night, sky during October, it's a good time to set up a star tracker and grab some telephoto shots of our closest galactic neighbour. Continuing in the northern hemisphere, Orion is now rising shortly after midnight and in the pre-dawn hours you can even capture the full winter circle. It's an asterism made up of bright stars from various constellations that are only visible during the winter months. I'll go into more detail in the coming months when it rises at a more appropriate time, but this area of the night sky is full of bright stars as well as the open star cluster Pleiades and is well worth capturing. Those in the southern hemisphere can still enjoy a bit of Milky Way core action. As darkness falls, it forms a low arch over the western horizon, making for quite a nice panorama. Similar to this image I captured in Chile not so long ago, which was featured in my latest vlog where you can win a Benro geared head and Mark III tripod, so don't miss that. In the pre-dawn hours of the Southern Hemisphere, there's another opportunity for a Milky Way arch that also includes the Winter Circle asterism. It's an image I've yet to take for myself, so here's a screenshot from Stellarium. During this month, both the small and large Magellanic clouds reach their highest points in the sky. So for those of you down south, you also have an opportunity to pull out the star trackers and grab some telephoto shots of these dwarf galaxies. It's also worth mentioning that it's a good time of year for both the northern and southern lights. The southern hemisphere nights are now shortening, but there's still a chance to catch the Aurora Australis, whereas the Aurora Borealis season is just kicking off. Here's some images from Adrian Mordrit taken in Norway at the end of September of a particularly good show. So as winter is now fast approaching, it's worth keeping an eye on geomagnetic activity. Now there's also a few active meteor showers this month. The Draconid meteor shower, which favors the Northern Hemisphere, peaks around the 8th to the 9th, but it has a less than impressive hourly rate and will unfortunately be largely hindered by a waxing gibbous moon. So I won't dwell much on this one. The Taurid meteor shower becomes active throughout October, although it won't peak until November. Taurid meteors often fall as fireballs, bright, slow burning meteors that will take your breath away. So try and keep your eyes on the skies as much as possible as there will be heightened chances of catching a fireball this month. Lastly, there is the Orionid meteor shower that is active from the start of the month through to the start of November, but is set to peak around the 21st to the 22nd. Orionids can be seen from anywhere on Earth, with the radiant point being, of course, in the constellation Orion. 
although it's not always best to look directly towards the radian point, if you look slightly away from the radian point, you will catch meteors with much longer tails. Orionid meteor activity tends to pick up in the pre-dawn hours, but unfortunately viewing will be hindered by a last quarter moon. However, it's still worth getting out and aiming your camera west, away from the moon, and of course trying your luck in the evening before the moon has risen. So sadly, the peaks of all the meteor showers will be hindered by the moon in some way, but do expect heightened meteor activity throughout the month, so try and get out and shoot as much as possible. Now, as I mentioned last month, it's a good time of year to capture the zodiacal light, a triangular diffuse glow caused by a band of dust and rocks in the same plane of the planets reflecting sunlight back into the night sky. It's at its best around the equinoxes, which fell on September the 21st, but of course it's still shining bright. Those close to the equator can see it all year round. However, during October, those in the northern hemisphere can see it from the eastern horizon from a couple of hours before dawn and those in the southern hemisphere can find it emanating from the western horizon for a couple of hours after dusk. It is a very faint glow so you want to make sure there's no light pollution in the direction you're shooting as well. Lastly, there's a few conjunctions to note this month. On the 3rd, a crescent moon and Jupiter can be found in the southwest after sunset. Two days later on the 5th, a quarter moon will be right next to Saturn in the southern skies during the late evening. Then towards the end of the month, there are a few other opportunities. On the 26th, a very thin crescent moon and Mars can be found in the pre-dawn hours. On the 29th, a very thin crescent moon will be right next to Venus just after sunset in the southwest. West. On the next day, the crescent moon will be between Venus and Jupiter in the southwest, and then on the 31st, the crescent moon will be right next to Jupiter. So plenty of good opportunities for some nice moon and planet images, perhaps pulling out a telephoto lens or a slightly longer focal length, like a 50mm. And that is about it for this month, guys. Even though Milky Way course season has come to an end now, there are still plenty of opportunities for amazing nightscapes. Before we get into the hashtag Wittens, I just want to announce the release of my Wittens calendar that will feature dates of significant astro opportunities worldwide. They are now available for pre-order at a sale price through my website, and I'm aiming to begin shipping towards the end of October. As always, thank you all so, so much for the support. It really means a lot, and it allows me to continue doing what I love sharing my knowledge and inspiring you guys to get out and enjoy the night sky as well. For those of you that are new here, every month I set a subject and people tagged in images with hashtag Wittens, what's in the night sky, for a chance to be featured in next month's video and on my Instagram account at Alan Wallace. Last month I didn't set the subject, I just let it be a free for all and I've had to pick my top five instead of a top three this month because there were some really insane entries that made it difficult to whittle down to three. So starting with this Aurora Australis image from New Zealand by Cookie Mick, a very serene, calming scene and nice to see the large Magellanic cloud there as well and of course a nice bit of Milky Way only visible from the southern hemisphere. Heading north for the Aurora Borealis is this wonderful capture by Risto Leskinen with green arcs over a river in Finland and I love this human element as well. You just want to beat that person in the image enjoying that spectacular show. There were many awesome Milky Way shots, but I loved this otherworldly capture of bubbling mud by Alan Crossland. It was taken in Azerbaijan, but it could almost be another planet. I just love this sort of otherworldly feel to it. I also love this colourful star trail by Joel Stafford. It's a great use of a longer focal length to make the subject more dominant there. And nice to see a star trail that's not facing the poles for giant circles. You can really feel the rotation of Earth in this image. There were also a lot of amazing full moon rise shots this month, with this being my favourite taken by Alistair Hamill, particularly with the strong atmospheric dispersion warping the shape of the moon. And I just love the colour harmony in this image. It's so powerful. It's really, really beautiful. Lastly, an honourable mention to Mattia Biki for this amazing time lapse where he was lucky to capture a really nice boholide meteor in one of the frames. Head on over to his page and watch the full time lapse and hopefully we'll see some more fireballs in next month's Wittens as well. This month I want to see your shots of the zodiacal light. It's a subject that barely gets any attention so it'd be good to see what you guys come up with and last time I set it as a subject we didn't really get many entries so this time I'm counting on you guys. I'll also be looking out for any images with meteors as well especially some nice torrid fireballs so good luck. So that's it for this month, guys. Don't forget to check out the 2020 Witten's calendar. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies. Mm -hmm.